Guten Morgen. Uh, I, I don't I don't speak German. But you understood that it was German. I did understand it was German. We're Welcome back to Down Below. Making this RPG. I'm Ian. I'm Steve. And so we're going to talk about the combat system today and why it doesn't exist. Yep. It's Mo uh, oop, Most it games, is. it does. Most games, there's a special system for combat. Some games, uh, like older versions of D&D, &D and actually, in some ways, even the current 5th edition of D&D, &D, but especially older versions of D&D &D and like Palladium RPGs and other game systems, there's such a vast disconnect between combat and the rest of the system that sometimes they don't even roll the same dice, or they just use very different resolution mechanics. Similarly, it's such a thing in the RPG industry that not only for games like D&D &D, uh, and Legend of the Five Rings, where it makes sense to have an in-depth combat system, Legend of the Five Rings goes an extra step further by having an in-depth rest of the system as well, mm -hmm. uh, there's the games like the, uh, the various World of Darkness games, uh, Exalted, and uh, even games such as uh, Gumshoe, which is all about investigation, that spend, in some cases, more words on combat than on what the game describes itself to be about. And in the Down Below RPG, we are not going to have a combat system separate from the rest of the system, because this game is not specifically about that, and we believe that in the context of your cyberpunk action story, combat is just one more type of action. It's just another challenge to be resolved by applying your trait to the challenge at hand. If we left it there, though, this would be a really short video. So we're going to talk a little bit about why we're at, how we're actually going about this. See, we're not entirely unique in making combat just another kind of check. There's a couple other games out there that straight up say the only difference between a combat check and a regular check is that combat checks are always time limited, there's always time for reaction and initiative order, it's just, it's an opposed check, here's what the opponent does. And some of them go a little even farther than that, and have combat be just another type of conflict to resolve. Burning Wheel, which is the system that Mouse Guard uses, yep. is famous for this. And uh, we are, in this regard, pretty close to Burning Wheel, because if we're in combat, it's just a check. Uh, the main differences for us is that uh, when we're defining stakes, so instead of going the burning wheel route, which is to say combat is a type of check that will almost always have physical stakes at, uh, at, at, at heart, we kind of reversed that. We said that uh, while combat will almost always have physical stakes, so might other things too. So in a way mm -hmm. we took it and we backwards engineered that idea to the rest of the system. The difference between combat and some other challenge in this game is what traits you are using to resolve mm -hmm. the situation. So it is the players who decide whether it's a combat scene or a negotiation scene yep. or a hacking scene, but it's the GM who's deciding whether you're going to get shot as a result of failure in this scene, whichever traits you're using to resolve it. One of the things that has often been said is uh, the James Bond movies, and honestly most super spy movies, would make fantastic D&D campaigns, and then they realize they wouldn't. If you're modeling these things straight up through a D&D system, for instance, you can take several bullets into the head and be completely fine as long as none of them crit or do massive damage, because it's just hit points, man. Uh, so it's impossible systematically to have tense standoffs without loads and loads of further rules. On the flip side, if we take it and we make it so that every single check works the same way, and every check could have consequences, for instance, uh, in the middle of a negotiation scene, the, uh, the, uh, the opposing uh, force pulls out a gun, points it at a hostage's head, and says, make the wrong choice and I blow their head off, in D&D &D, you might start asking questions such as, well, how much hit points does the NPC have, is, is, the, uh, is the enemy going to have enough accuracy to hit? Uh, I think we can take him. We'll probably get two or three rounds of combat out. In Down Below, you fail, and the bullet goes into the head, and the hostage is dead. And that's the consequence. That's the described consequence. And so you have to decide whether you're going to accept that failure and that consequence, or whether you're going to succeed somehow if you have something appropriate ready to go. And if you don't, then you might have to accept that failure, and that's the entire way that this system builds up the tension of the challenge, is by saying, 
if you use up all your successes and then you're presented with this situation, yep. then you're going to be forced into failure, so you might want to choose your failures, and that's the game aspect. Part of the other thing we're doing here is we're not limiting ourselves to uh, straight-up micromanaged tactical movement. There's a lot of drama to be had in tactics, and honestly, bad tactics kills drama. But we don't see the need in this particular game to go into second-by-second -second tactical positioning on a map or hex grid or squares. Rather, it's better to say, for dramatic purposes, James Bond takes refuge behind the cover of crates, alert for opponents who are trying to flank him. We have talked about it in other episodes where we were going into more depth on specific system concepts, but tactics and the specific interactions of elements within your scene mm -hmm. and your action scene, those should influence which trait is appropriate to use to succeed in a situation, what you can get out of that success. So while the most you can get out of a success is succeeding, mm. the GM can, depending on your tactics, decide that this success has more or less stakes on the table in terms of what happens in the scene. We talked about this uh, briefly in passing in a previous episode, but to paraphrase it from a famous dystopia, all successes are equal, but some successes are more equal than others. And especially some are less equal than others because the GM might decide that at a default, one success will allow you to take out one MOOC, but you're facing 12 guys, mm -hmm. whereas if you have a really, really clever tactic, you might be able to take all of them out, or a chunk of them out, at once, and put yourself in a less dangerous situation where you've got less people shooting at you and your friends. Exactly. So, that's why we don't have a specific combat situation, because the same rules that resolve whether you negotiate your way out of a situation or shoot your way out apply equally in this game and we've gone to great lengths to make it the same and make it the player's choice as to whether this is a combat scene where the consequences are whether or not we get the money or a negotiation scene where the consequences are whether or not we get shot Yep. because the GM is putting those consequences on the table and the players are choosing the actions and the trait their characters use to overcome them and so we don't need to make special initiative systems or special injury systems because it's all in the consequences, positive or negative, of your successes and failures and the traits that you use to get there. And there you have it. So next time, as we brought up last uh, yesterday, when, if you were watching, we are going to talk about LaGrange City and why it is the fairy tale destination, why it is a way out of Down Below for so many people who believe in it. And we hope you'll be there with us. Thanks for tuning in.